Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I'm Brink, and you're listening to The Voice of Insanity, bringing you an opinion about a game. Today we're going to be talking about Ashes of the Singularity, and I can tell you right off the bat that this is going to be a much more disorganized and lengthy view of this game than I typically do. Stick around if you want to get all the little bits and pieces and details. Fast forward to the end by clicking the link up in the corner if you want to get the summary and my opinion on it. This is an early access review. Probably too early to form any solid opinion on this game. So this is strictly all informational. If you want to pick up the Founders Pack, that is up to you. I'm not doing any kind of buyer's recommendation or anything on this. This is strictly a discussion of Ashes of the Singularity and the direction that it is headed. I have a game that I played versus AI that's going to be scrolling in the background. You can see everything going on there and a pretty good look at how the gameplay rolls out. Um, and we're just going to discuss some of the nitty gritty details and see what happens. The game has been compared to Supreme Commander. I have made that comparison and some people call me on it saying, hey, Brink, you're biased. You can't compare everything to Supreme Commander just because that's the only game you play. Well, that's not the only game I play and I'm not the only one who has made that comparison. You can go look at Rock, Paper, Shotgun that does pretty extensive articles on RTS games as they're released. That was pretty much the first thing they did was compare Ashes of the Singularity to Subcom because it's the game that it reminded the author of the most. You can scroll around through articles on your nearest interwebs. You'll find that pretty much true in a lot of them. Um, I think the main reason that that happens is because Ashes of the Singularity has attacked the RTS genre on such a grand scale. When you think of epic RTSs, when you think of the tremendous unit caps, the huge playing fields, that kind of thing, you automatically think of games like Total Annihilation and Supreme Commander. There aren't many of them out there, so that's the immediate fallback when you think of grand scale warfare. Um, I don't think that they should be compared that closely because this takes a completely separate gameplay style. There's no assassination victory. You rack up points by capturing generators to uh, secure victory points. It, it plays at a totally different pace than Supreme Commander, but I think people are eager to make that comparison because of the scale of the game. I don't think you will ever get out of Ashes of the Singularity what you get out of Supreme Commander. As far as the game itself goes, right now explosions are placeholders, a lot of projectiles are placeholders, um, some textures aren't quite finished yet, there's only one faction, there's a limited selection of maps, there's bugs everywhere. It is your typical early alpha game. Do not buy it if you don't have a good PC because you will not be able to play it. I have a highly overclocked GTX 760, 4 gigs of RAM with a 4790K driving it, and I can barely crack 60 frames per second on the absolute lowest settings graphically that are available. Some of the people that have been looking at this game have been debating on the merits of DirectX 12 and all that kind of stuff. I can say my card is a generation or more old, it's got a little bit of age on it, and DirectX 12 did actually make an improvement for me. I was getting 55 normal use, 61 average frames per second on DirectX 11, and DirectX 12 was getting me 59 and 66. Both of them under load were in the low 50s, high 40s range. So. The game is unoptimized. I can tell you that. <laughs> and hopefully the footage in the background does okay because my recording setup was at its maximum running this thing. The gameplay itself to me feels a bit slow. And it's hard to tell at this point because everything is so underdeveloped, but the very nature of the game seems to be geared more slowly to me. Um, you have to capture points on the map and hold them to accrue victory points in order to win. The amount of points that you need to win varies by the map or you can set it manually. You can win by destroying the entirety of your enemy. You have to destroy all of the nodes, which I think means all the factories, that kind of thing. So you can win by total demolition, but it takes a long time to do it that way. 
Unit movement in general is pretty dang lethargic. The method that they use to track projectiles, the uh, weapons that they use are pretty slow paced, and most of the units are very beefy and uh, get damaged slowly. So you end up with these collisions where you'll have a, two or three groups of units meet and they take forever to kill each other. Um, so it, it isn't quite as violently paced as most RTS games I've played. Now granted, they could be rebalancing that in the future, but it seems to me that everything in this game is geared toward a little bit slower pace of warfare. Uh, I know there's, I'm gonna go back to Supreme Commander again because most of my viewing audience love Supreme Commander and that's the game that they know. Um, I know people blame Supreme Commander for being slow paced, but I can tell you that Supreme Commander Seems like a ride on a rocket ship compared to playing a game of Ashes of the Singularity. The economy is pretty simplified, especially compared to Subcom. You only have two resources, uh, radiation, or radioactives rather, and the metal. And those, stalling either one doesn't really hurt you. Your units just produce slower. It is a flex economy and you can assist factories to build units quicker. So that is awesome. Great addition on that. Um, but there's not really the finesse in the economy that you see in Supreme Commander. It's pretty much throw your buildings down, throw your factories down, try not to stall too hard and get your units out. The There is not a tech tree per se, but you do have to upgrade logistics for your unit count, which gets incredibly expensive over time. And you can use global abilities and upgrade the attack and the armor on your units as a whole using points from a quantum antenna. I cannot remember what it's called at this point, um, but it generates quanta that you spend on those upgrades. So there isn't a tech tree, but you can outpace your opponent by simply teching up your units on the field to accrue more and more damage over time. There are larger units, there's not really tiers. Um, you start out building mostly lighter scouting units strictly because of cost. Once you start getting radioactives in, you can bump up to cruisers and artillery pieces and then even up to the Titans, which are the massive ships that you see all over the place in the benchmark and that kind of thing. The variety of units is fairly good, and I think that they will be introducing more. There are healing units and like a booster that has an area of effect that helps out groups. And then there's a pretty good variety of long range, mid range, melee, armored units, that kind of thing. And there are three air units at the moment. I don't know what their plans are for expanding the air game. So. And then they will be adding an orbital tier for like orbital bombardment call downs and that kind of thing in a later patch. So there's a pretty wide variety of things to do, but in the end, it all comes back to grinding away, trying to hold those points on the map that have generators and basically just not slipping. Um, it's a very different approach to a game than I've seen before, and I'm not sure how it will turn out. There's other games that have used this system, but they tended to be faster paced on smaller maps. And we're just going to have to see how this all plays out as it goes. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are specifically wondering about the user interface, because the user interface is kind of what makes or breaks strategy games. The ease of use how well you can lay out commands and queue orders and the intelligence that you can gather on the map at a glance. The strategic zoom unfortunately is not there. The developer made it very clear that he did not want strategic zoom and he did not want strategic icons which I firmly believe is a complete mistake. At the moment you can zoom out to where on a small map you can see about a fifth of the map and then you can pan around you can grab the Mac and map and move with the right mouse click which ends up being how I get around most of the time and of course you can use arrow keys or bump the edges um, the UI is not super clean at the moment and you end up misclicking a lot but a lot of that is just 
fine tuning that needs to be done as the alpha progresses. There's a couple of issues that I have with the UI that are very specific. Um, number one being the lack of strategic zoom and icons, which is pretty self-explanatory. Number two, the heat map. If you press the space bar, a map pops up with red and blue dots marking all of the units on the map that are in your intelligence sphere. And that's pretty much it. It shows zone control and red dots. And that's your master of command intelligence view. I, I don't really understand the design choice by that and I found it incredibly useless. Um, and then when you zoom out, you really can't tell what units are what. All of the units look about the same. Some of them have pretty much identical footprints except for minor differences in the, uh, the gun patterns on top and that kind of thing. So after the initial stages of the game when you start getting a lot of units on the board it ends up just being this seething gray mass and you don't know what anything is anymore and you just kind of grab chunks of units and throw them somewhere and hope for the best and that just seems incredibly confused and pointless to me i i can almost understand the developer saying i want people to be able to see the units I don't want to have a sea of icons moving around the map, but if you're going to do that, you've got to at least make the units distinctive so you can tell what's what. If you're going to have units that look like they do, then give us icons so we can tell the difference between them. Um, and then even when you zoom up close, it's really hard to tell what units do what. There's no universal pattern for, hey, this is an artillery unit, this is a main tank that kind of thing. The pathfinding, I wouldn't necessarily call it flow field, but it does kind of remind me of that. Everything is a hover unit, which makes it feel kind of detached. There's no tanks with tread on the ground. There's no walking. There's none of that. It's basically just units floating hither and yon, and they overlap. They run over each other, go under each other, and to a certain extent, it looks like there's a collision system there, but if you look really closely, hitboxes are overlapping, units go through each other. Um, it, it's just not very clean. I wasn't super impressed with that aspect. I know that pathfinding is a really hard thing to work out in an RTS game, but this just seems really messy. I mean, if you're gonna go to all the trouble of having units that hover and go over and under each other, you get at least preserve the hitboxes and force collisions on units, but it's, it's not there and I'm not sure what to think of it. I haven't fully formulated my opinion, but it didn't look that clean to me. The other aspect of the UI that bothered me was the Empire Tree on the left, which I believe is pretty much directly ripped from um, Sins of a Solar Empire, which was fairly easy to use in Sins because everything was split up by the planet grouping where your unit was located, but in this game everything is just kind of thrown in together. It doesn't provide any intelligence on what enemy units are there. It doesn't separate units out into types or anything like that. It's just there. It's a blob of icons on the UI. And the only thing that that can be used for is if you create battle groups. Now this game treats battle groups differently than most RTSs. Every, pretty much everything that I've seen up to this point has been you use control, one through zero, you have ten groups, uh, grab your groups, hit one to queue them up, you know the drill. This one, you create an army and it basically forces all the units that you have selected under a single AI. And that AI creates routing patterns, organizes your units by what firing type they are, uh, tries to pace everything out for maximum combat effectiveness, and you can have pretty much any number of units in that battle grouping. And it pops up on the Empire Tree on the left side as a single unit. And you can grab that unit and move it across the map, and all of those units will hunch together and they will travel to that location and do what they can to the best of their ability. That is actually a really cool feature, but I, I just don't like the Empire Tree. It, it is a massive amount of clutter on the UI, and the majority of the time I found myself 
just scrolling to the bottom of it trying to find factories and that was pretty much it. Um, I, I have not fully learned all of the hotkeys on this game. I'm using them a, f a little bit more than I do on Supreme Commander, but it's just not quite there yet. Um, so there's a lot of cluttered thoughts on everything. I'm, I've played through it enough that I have a feel for it. I can consistently beat normal AIs. I'm interested to try it versus a person, so I'm actually seeing what a human does versus me instead of just the AI. Um, but it, it is what it is. It's not Supreme Commander. I can tell you that. It is far, far from Supreme Commander. I think it's one of those games that we're going to have to see what it develops into and just form our opinions strictly based on what we see and not preconceptions. You know, I want the game to look like this. I want it to do this. I guess that leads us up to, well, no, there's one more thing that I wanted to discuss. The, um, the game engine. The game engine has tremendous potential. I think that this is possibly the single best engine for RTS that has ever been developed because it has full multi-thread support, it leverages the, the uh, GPU very effectively and the CPU to its fullest extent. I know a lot of people, right when this first came up, the Founders Edition before early access on Steam, there was a lot of people having problems with DirectX, DirectX 12. Um, and some of that was because the NVIDIA drivers hadn't caught up yet. There was a lot of debate on whether, oh, this is for AMD Mantle, so it'll only work on AMD cards. Well, I can tell you DirectX 12 is an improvement even if you have older NVIDIA cards. Uh, I was pulling an average of 55 frames per second on DirectX 11, and that bumped up to 59 on DirectX 12. And that is an average of all usage. So... It's a pretty accurate number. I can say though that this game is so unoptimized, which is to be expected on an early access title, but I have a GTX 760, highly overclocked, four gigs of RAM, and a 4790K, and I could only approach 60 frames per second on the absolute minimum settings for the game. If I set everything to normal ranges that I would typically put a game at, uh, you know, mid textures, shadows on, lighting effects on, um, the the normal things that I would do, and I typically get 55 to 60 frames per second in a lot of newer games too, because I've only got 1080p monitors. Um, I was getting like 22 to 29 frames per second in this game. It was it was bad, major choke point. Um, so maybe that will be improved. I really hope it is because if not, there's going to be a pretty wide divide as far as hardware goes when this game is released. It'll be almost like Supreme Commander all over again. It'll be out and computers can't really handle the full potential of the game. So maybe that won't happen. All right. That brings me to final thoughts. Basically, it's too early to tell. This game is in very early access, only has one faction. Um, the map choices are limited. There's tons of features missing that are earmarked for implementation. There's bugs all over the place. You need a good PC to run it. Do not buy this if you don't want a test product. That being said, I think this game will eventually be something worth playing, but it is not Supreme Commander. I repeat, not Supreme Commander. The comparison to Supreme Commander is made on a regular basis, and I think that's fine because it is an epic scale RTS, but the gameplay is paced completely differently, and the victory conditions and overall feel of the gameplay does not remind me at all of Supreme Commander. It's also missing some of the UI elements, such as the full strategic zoom, icon support, that kind of thing. So. I would wait to form an opinion on this until later. I would refrain from trolling a bunch of forums, uh, trying to make it into something that it's not. And if you don't like what you see now, just don't get the alpha. This is what alphas are for. If you're interested in trying out the game and giving feedback to the developers and bug testing, pick it up, 
but it is definitely not ready for the average person to pick it up and try to play a few games. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap up everything on this. I know it was a little bit longer than usual, a little rambly, a little bit uh, here and there, but I think that pretty much sums up everything that I have seen so far in about 10 hours of playtime on Ashes of the Singularity. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.